You could chill three hundred times and have a billion times and all that, but that's all in a lifetime. But it's all in one lifetime, baby. What you doing now? Hello. Welcome to another exciting episode of What Does Yolo Mean To Me. My name is Dilav Agas. I play the role of Odenchen and I'm your host for today. Yolo is a UTV serial which deals with adolescent reproductive health issues and encourages young people to adapt positive behaviors to help them enjoy their good life. So what's that? Is there a porn magazine? A National Geographic special. So you have everything you see, want to? Your voice down. So it's a porn magazine. Where did you get it from? Let's go borrow my bag, we try it. Hey, you know unless class is a point. Unless you don't Mr. Bet to roast you this after you find someone and hide these things. Hey! Mr. Bet to be nice for you. Yes! Charlie! Yeah? And what does YOLO mean to me? We get to meet you, the fans, to discuss what YOLO TV series means to you as an individual and the impact it has made on your life. As well as touch on a few important adolescent reproductive health issues which I highlighted in the YOLO TV series. Remember, you can enjoy a good life by exercising and eating a healthy diet. Also, to continue to enjoy a good life in this COVID era, we have to be cautious to stay safe. Always wear your face masks, wash your hands with soap and the running water, do not hug or shake hands, use hand sanitizers, avoid touching your mouth or your face, ensure physical distance of about two meters between you and others in public, and avoid overcrowded places. Here with me are five individuals. I'll let them introduce themselves and tell us why they love you. Hi, I'm Watno Kujo Debra, a student of Infant Spam. I'm 17 years of age. Um, Yellow a series that kindly educates people or teenagers on how to live your life. My name is Betty Ojoku and I'm a student, 18 years of age. I'm also a footballer at the same time a single. Yolo is educative and it helps you to make the right decisions. My name is Rigoberta Maki Aita, a level 100 student of the University of Professional Studies Accra. I am 19 years of age. This is what Yolo means to me. It's informing, it's educative and it's entertaining. I'm Nanaja Nyamiche Eidu. I'm 17 years of age, a second year student of Hack Mountain Senior High School. Yolo has exposed and brought out some of the things that they used to do and be able to learn certain lessons, how to come out with ourselves, how to be proud of who you are, how to be firm with your stand and confront others about certain things. You know. We are going to talk about pornography and parental guidance. Before that, let's watch a scene from the YOLO TV series. <laughs> If you're ashamed of watching that stuff, then why do you do it? Sir, it's nothing. You're not even brave enough to admit that you are watching pornography in the hospital of all places. Look, listen to me. It wasn't too long ago where I was just like you. But take my advice. Boycott pornography, okay? Avoid it. Now let me tell you something. Like I said, not too long ago I was just like you. We all know that adolescence is a stage whereby young people like to discover, explore, and be adventurous. And it's okay. Huh? We get that. But that is just a fraction of the whole stage. Adolescence is a very critical stage whereby you young people need to prioritize your good, physical, and reproductive health. Now that stuff that you are watching, it fills your mind with all kinds of unrealistic fantasies. It creates addiction, it damages marriages, and most of all, it's going to lead you and some poor innocent girl into some big time trouble. And believe me, it only gets worse from there. So right now it's up to you. But please, I implore you to stay away from this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for listening. It's not something to play with at all. What is pornography? Are the sexual activities mainly in magazines or movies? Pornography, as we mostly know it, we mostly know it to be porn, is the portrayal of the sexual subject matter intended to create or for sexual harassment and sexual excitement. Pornography is a designed film used to show two people having sexual intercourse. Pornography is a representative material or behavior that arouses people sexually. Anyone who hears it looks at it or even thinks about it. Yeah, 
Should young people watch pornography? I don't think it is right for young people to be watching pornography because it increases their desire for sexual intercourse in the youth. I don't think young people should watch pornographic materials, that is the movies, the magazines and stuff. In actual sense, why should you watch pornography? It's not needed. Especially the youth, they are the ones fond of doing that. They often watch pornography just to satisfy their sexual needs, and, but pornography is not needed. You don't have to watch pornography. I would say no, it's not right for people to be watching pornography because when they watch, they will try to have or practice it at home. The youth should not watch pornography at all because watching pornography leads to certain things like you masturbating and masturbation itself is, is very bad. It has mental implications and your health can also be affected when you masturbate a lot. So I would advise that the youth should not watch pornography at all. How does pornography affect young people? And why do you think that is the case? Yeah, it causes um, serious effects on youth, whereby it gets them seriously addicted to sex and also watching it. Uh, mainly when you watch pornography, especially boys or shall I say male, they have blue balls or they try to have the experience on um, having sex. Yeah. Pornography is one thing that when you watch it once, you become an addict to it. It affects your learning one, it affects your thinking ability, it makes your mind, let me say corrupt, kind of. It gets to a time, even if you don't watch it one time, it's as if everything is lost, everything is missing for you. And it also brings about premarital sex, which could lead to teenage pregnancy. And it could damage your life, especially if you're a student and your parents are very strict and then you get yourself into a situation like that. They may even throw you out of the house and you may live your life on the streets or you won't get anyone to help you and your life will be a mess. Probably the goals you set up for yourself will not come to pass. So we just saw Mark Anthony catching on Dane Chain, looking into a pornographic magazine in class. What are some of the effects of looking at materials like this? The scene where Mark Anthony catches on Chain, looking through a pornographic magazine. If you are looking through a pornographic magazine in class, first of all, you are in school to learn. And you are supposed to be paying attention in class. So if your attention is drawn to something like that, you won't be able to pay attention to whatever the teacher comes to say. And then you'll be attracted to the opposite sex. And negative thoughts and unhealthy stuff will come into your mind. Yes. And it makes you uncomfortable. Some of the effects of watching pornography in class can get erected and you won't feel comfortable in class. You don't concentrate in class when they are, a teacher is teaching or something. Yeah. Due to the videos and stuff, it can push you to have sexual desires, to have sex even when you are not ready to have sex. Looking at the effects of watching pornographic materials, in the scene where we can Mark Anthony caught Odenchem watching through the pornographic material, we could see that at that moment, Odenchem is a student. He is actually in school to study, not to be watching those stuff. So as he has seen it once, he becomes an addict to it. He becomes an addict, and as time moves on, he'll be watching it frequently. So with that, he won't have time to study. This we can say that when you watch pornographic stuff, you don't study some way, somehow how it affects your learning. It affects your Christian life because Christians have been taught not to go by that. Pornographic materials also introduce you to this premarital sex because when you watch this, you get sexually aroused and you know but you know be firewood. But, so you can't just stay, you watch this and your body will be doing something, so just be there. Yes, so you'd have to find someone. So with this, it can cause premarital sex, and premarital sex often come with teenage pregnancy. Let's listen to what others have to say about this topic. My name is Faustina Graham, and I'm a student of Ghana Institute of Journalism. I'm 18 years old. Pornography is simple. It simply means the pictures or videos people watch to unroll their sexual feelings. I don't think people should watch pornography because Pornography, it arouses your, um, your sexual feeling, as I said, and that's for elderly people, so I don't think young people should be allowed to watch it. Pornography affects so many young people. Due to the, young, the pornography people watch, they tend to do the same as they see on the video or maybe magazine or something. So it, I think it affects them, even in school and many places. 
I can distract you. This, this, for instance, he was in class and it will take his mind off what, whether what the teacher was le- what the teacher was teaching. So it will take his mind off what he was supposed to do as at that time in class, and it will distract him. So our second and final discussion is on parental guidance. Hey, Mrs. Raffi, madam, long time. You've not been acting of us. I traveled all as usual. <laughs> yeah, I felt as much. It's been a while. And your son, is he back? Oh, Cyril, he's gone to see my folks in our hometown. Madam, if I were you, that boy should stay there and find some work to do. Why do you say that? That boy has been hanging out with. That so-called Joba guy is nothing but trouble. Did you know that the woman he has been living with all this while is not his sister or aunt, but a sugar man? Oh! Mm. What are you saying? You mean that woman that comes around during the weekend? That's one. She made this boy run away from home and rented an apartment for him, apparently. Hey, Charles! Mm-hmm. I'm going to come to come here right now. Oh, don't waste your time. He hasn't been home for like two days, I think. See, that area, that's where my kids are on vacation. I don't allow them to stay there. I'd rather take them to my brother's place at airport. Because I don't want trouble. These kids, you can advise them all they want. They will not listen. Do you think the likes of Jorba and Odenche misbehave because of a little or no parental guidance? Why and why not? When their parents are not at home to be advising them on some things, they get spoiled by peers. No, I will stand against it because when you get to this type of stage, there's a lot of things that come our way. We like to be free and also do whatever we want. And also, the advices and stuff, you have been advised though, but you know, as we are younger, we, f- we want to feel free and also do what we want. Those type of things, so actually, they won't even put attention on it. They'll do their own stuff. My answer is a no, because I think they are influenced by friends. And with them, we can see that whenever you reach the adolescent stage, we find out that you become adventurous. Everything, you just want to get yourself into it, just to see how it is. So I think that's the situation they are going through now. It's like their friends are doing it, so they also want to do it, see how it is and the feelings of it. Yes and a no. Yes, because probably a parent might be too busy with work, to have the time to talk to their child. Some parents are just in so much into their work that they don't even have time to sit their children down and talk to them, give them a pep talk about their, the kind of friends they choose and certain things that they do. So yes, it could be a cause of them leading into uh, lives like that. And no, because there are some children that no matter what their parents say to them, they always want to fit in with what their friends do. Whatever their friends will do negatively, that is watching pornographic materials. If they watch things like that, they feel left out. In order for them to fit in, they just have to go ahead and then do what their friends are doing so that they'll feel cool or feel like they're part of the crowd or something like that. Yeah. Do young people always need the presence of their parents or an adult to help them in the decisions they make? Yeah, they need the advice of some elders and also their parents. Because when it gets to that stage, it might be very serious that they can't handle it. They need some sort of guidance to guide them or lead them on the path. When their parents are around to be advising them, they won't be going around watching pornography. I think young people, or myself as an example, don't always need their parents to advise them or to guide them in certain decisions they make because there are some people like myself, there's, it's not everything I can confront my parents about. There are certain things that you feel more comfortable discussing with your peer. You listen to their opinion or their view about the situation and then you take it into consideration. If it will help you or the effects of it, then you do it because there are some people, they talk to their parents all right, they listen to their parents all right, but it doesn't stick in their heads and then they don't go according to what their parents have said. Yes, young people really need their parents to guide them in everything they do because we can understand that our parents are older than we are and they've gone through whatever we've gone through before so they know the circumstance and we have to listen to them. So listening to them always takes us to the right path. But I know too because most youth are, they really listen to their friends than their parents. 
So the influence of friends rather works faster than that of parents. But the parents also have to try harder to make sure that what they say to their children rather works than what they hear from their friends. Let's listen to what some of the youth in other parts of the country have to say about the topic. The lines of Jigba in Odenche misbehaved because since he was the only person and he was lacking parenting control, he, he always felt like doing what he wanted to do because at the end he wouldn't be punished or no one, no parent would come around to let him know what he's doing is not correct. How will you feel when you see your friends in possession of pornographic materials or when they invite you to watch? Do you agree that parental guidance is essential to the development of an adolescent? Add your voice to the discussion by sending your comments via video or text to the number on your screen or log on to our social media platforms and drop a comment. Thank you for joining us on another season of What Does Yolo Mean To Me. I hope you had fun and picked up enough information to help live your good life. Also, to continue to enjoy a good life in this COVID era, we have to be cautious to stay safe. Always wear your face mask, wash your hands with soap and the running water. Do not hug or shake hands. Use hand sanitizers. Avoid touching your mouth or your face. Ensure physical distance of about two meters between you and others in public and avoid overcrowded spaces. This special edition of What Does Yolo Mean To Me was designed to keep the discussion of all that we are learning from the Yolo TV series going. My name is Queen Stani, popularly known as Emmy. My name is Nana Manfofua and I play the role of Ariana. My name is Kevin Boone and I play the role of Mark Anthony in YOLO. My name is Jason Edward. I play the role of Psycho. My name is Lola Likwashiga. I play the role of Anne. My name is Ivan Duma. I play the role of Abrantia. My name is Aaron Adachi. I play the character Cyril in YOLO, aka the Mama's Boy. I am Akosia Asiedwa and I play the role of Tilly in YOLO TV series. My name is Chief and I play the role of George. My name is William Odate Lamke. I play the role of Flex. Zamzain. My name is Krista Belewa Mwabeng. I play the role of Lydia. My name is Eti Bedi and I play the role Yasmin in the YOLO TV series. Remember to live a good life. Good life, live it all. Good life is an everyday thing. YOLO, you only live once.